The final item of business is Members' Business Debate on Motion 15536 in the name of James Kelly on the threatened closure of the St Rollox Railway Works. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put, and I would ask those who wish to speak in the debate to press the request to speak buttons. I call on James Kelly to open the debate for around seven minutes, please, Mr Kelly. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer, and it gives me great pleasure to open this member's debate on the threat and closure of the St Rolox uh, Railway Works. Uh, I want to start by welcoming the members of Unite and RMT to the Scottish Parliament Chamber this evening. I'm delighted to see that so many of the workforce have made their way through from Springburn this evening to support this debate. Uh, and I know that they've made their views clear outside the Parliament and also in lobbying uh, uh, MSPs in Committee Room 4. I want to particularly pay tribute to the Unite Rally Round the Cali campaign and the successful petition which has got over 3,000 signatories to date, and I think that shows the strength of feeling that there is. I want to thank all the MSPs who have supported the motion, uh, pay particular tribute to the constituency MSP, uh, Bob Doris, who I know has worked hard on the issue, and also to Paul Sweeney, the local MP who held the debate uh, in the House of Commons on the issue. Um, this is a serious uh, members' debate, and it comes at a really vital time for the workforce uh, because people's jobs are at threat and this has got a, an impact on people's lives. And I think it's particularly poignant when you look at the history of the Cali Works uh, in Springburn. It spans back uh, 160 years and many families uh, have got a history and a tradition there. Uh, my own uncle, James White, uh, worked there throughout the 60s, uh, 70s and, and 80s. And my cousin Claire was recently recalling on Facebook how many of the families used to go down to the works and look at the engines being built and sometimes crawl under the engines. Um, and that shows you the, the, the memories and the, the powerful emotion that's attached to this. Uh, and many of the, the people in the gallery uh, carry those traditions on. I know that there are people there who have worked more than 30 years at the site and we don't want to see that loss of uh, experience and, and expertise in terms of the repair and maintenance uh, of uh, engines at that work. As I say, we're at a very crucial time um, because we're now in the consultation period uh, which has been launched by the employers uh, Gemini and that consultation period closes on March the 4th and I think it's absolutely crucial that we can't allow the clock simply to run down to March the 4th with nothing uh, happening uh, because that would be catastrophic, not only for the workers there in the gallery, but also for the local community and the wider economy. When uh, factories are threatened by closure, um, quite often, quite correctly, people will focus on what is the economic case for keeping the factory open. And in this case, there's a really, really powerful uh, case to be made for keeping the, the Springburn plant open. Uh, we have many debates across this chamber on the, the issue of rail services. Uh, and although there are some heated disagreements around uh, ScotRail and Abellio, one thing we all agree on is the importance of infrastructure and the importance of efficient rolling stock. And from that point of view, uh, the Cali Works has not only got an important role to play, but it's actually got a, a role to play in terms of growing that uh, and growing that you know, economic base and contribution to the economy. I think the other thing to bear in mind is the, the skills that there are uh, within that workforce. And that's shown by, if you look at the January sales figures at the plant, 1.8 million uh, pounds of sales, greater than the, uh, the, the budgeted budget for that period of 1.6 million. And that demonstrates that in a very difficult time when jobs were under threat, how well and how diligently that workforce performed. And if that was uh, translated throughout the year, that would give you sales of 21.6 million. So, you know, we shouldn't in any way be uh, ending, the, the ending not just the history, but the economic asset and the great skills of that workforce uh, on March the 4th. We need action now. 
And that's why, uh, along with Unite and RMT, uh, I'm calling for an in, an, a direct intervention from the government in this case uh, to look at the option of public ownership. It's been done before uh, with Presswick, and I think the economic case is really strong to be done there uh, at Springburn. There's also a number of issues that can be looked at in relation to that that would uh, make, the, make the, the site even more viable. Uh, the electrification of the site into Glasgow, when locomotives uh, and engines are retained there currently, it costs £10,000 to move them in and out the site. Electrification would save that cost. Uh, the point's also been made by Unite of the potential for a transport <coughs> hub there, um, you know, bringing ScotRail, Network Rail uh, all together. And from that point of view, I think what the government should be doing as a very minimum is uh, enlisting the services of Scottish Enterprise to bring all the agencies together and to look at the economic case. But it's absolutely crucial that we don't go beyond March the 4th without any sort of government intervention, even if it's done on a temporary basis to allow the work to continue and to allow the assess the, 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 the absolutely essential economic assessment uh, to be carried out. We need action now. So uh, I think it's great that we've got the workers here in the gallery this evening. And when Michael Matheson comes to respond, what I would urge you to do, Cabinet Secretary, is speak directly to the workers, because that's why they've come here this evening. Uh, <coughs> they want to see some sort of intervention from the government. So there's a big responsibility on you, Mr. Matheson. I know you're, uh, you're a Falkirk MSP now, but I know, you, I know you grew up in Glasgow, you grew up in Tory Glen, so you know the devastation that the potential uh, loss of these jobs would cause. So uh, I'm, I'm asking along with the other MSPs in the chamber that what we need now is government intervention, look at the option of public ownership, act now before March the 4th so that we can save those jobs so that it can save the economic asset that is the Cali Works and allow it to continue, not only so that people still have their livelihoods, but so that they can still make that massive contribution to rail services and the wider Scottish economy. Thank you. Uh, can I say to those in the public gallery, it's a delight to have you here, but I'd appreciate it if you don't... Um, clap, boo, jeer, or anything at all. Thank you very much. And can I say to the members, please, that you don't speak directly to anyone. You speak through the chair. Thank you. And speeches, please, of four minutes. Uh, Alec Neil, followed by Richard Leonard. Thank you very much indeed, the Deputy Presiding Officer. Can I, first of all, congratulate James Kelly on securing this debate tonight, and to Bob Doris for securing his debate tomorrow night and to the two of them collectively for the first time in 20 years in persuading the Bureau to have two debates on the same subject one day after the other. But that's well merited in this case because of the importance of this issue. And this is not just a Springburn issue, it's not just a Glasgow issue, issue it's a Scottish issue and it's about the future of our industrial base. I think the first thing to say is a word or two about the company that currently owns the facility, uh, Gemini, which is a subsidiary of the Metaris company based in Munich. Now, I'm not in any way naturally hostile to foreign companies coming into Scotland to produce work and production because that's the way the modern world works. But what I do object to is treating people with contempt which I think is exactly what is happening here, as has happened far too often in Scotland's industrial history. Uh, this factory, this facility, has been going since 1856, and despite the rumours, I wasn't there at the opening ceremony. Uh, but for all those years, it has serviced not just the market in Scotland, but the wider market across the UK. And I have no doubt, by the way, that if this facility were to close, the first-class workers who work there, many of them first-class engineers, would find no difficulty in getting another job because already they are being well poached.
by other companies in the west of Scotland and beyond. But that's not the fundamental issue. The fundamental issue for the Scottish economy is how can we retain capacity in a sector which has got a growth future. If this was dealing with a sector where, like diesel cars, where the long-term future is highly questionable, then we would be in a very different situation. But it's not. It's dealing with an engineering repair and maintenance facility that has got a potential future if we are able to put that future together. And therefore, I think it's extremely important, first of all, that we send out a loud and clear message from across all the parties in this chamber that we must do, not just as a government, but as a parliament, everything we can do in the limited time left to try to save this facility. Not for yesteryear, although that's important, but for tomorrow, for tomorrow's jobs, for tomorrow's economy. And the first thing we have to do is to try to get this company to see sense. And at the very, very least, keep this facility going because they've got the orders to do it for at least another three to six months to give us time to look at all the options being looked at by the stakeholder group and others to see which option is possible and practical to move forward to. My own view is that those options should include the possibility of setting up a dedicated company, not trying to sell it as another, to another company as a branch operation, but we should look at being entrepreneurial ourselves to see if we can, with perhaps private sector funding, along with the public sector, see if we can create a new dedicated company to take over this capacity. We should also look in intensive detail at the transport hub idea, and those two ideas are not mutually exclusive. But the message from this debate tonight must be to explore every single option to do it urgently, to do it ambitiously, to think outside the box, to be entrepreneurial and do everything we can, not just to save the jobs, that's critically important, but to save the future of this facility if we can do so. Richard Leonard, followed by Annie Wales. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And can I draw members' attention to my register of interests, in particular my membership of the Trade Union Unite? I want to begin by thanking James Kelly for bringing this important industrial matter to the Scottish Parliament. This is precisely the kind of issue which this Parliament was established to address. It is what Michael McGarhy described as the case for a decentralised and devolved Parliament in order to involve the people of a country in the operation of power at every possible level, which is why I am delighted as well that so many workers at the centre of this campaign who are in the fight of their lives are here tonight in the public gallery. I'm sure that in this debate there will be no shortage of contributions that recognise, some may even glorify, the important role that the Cali has played in Scotland's industrial past. But I want to talk about its present and its future because it remains today the largest train repair and maintenance site in Scotland. And its loss would mean that we would no longer be able to repair and maintain our railway rolling stock, something we have been able to do since the dawn of the steam age. Since its privatisation in 1995, the Springburn Works has been owned by Babcock International, by Siemens, by Alstom, by Railcare, by Nor Brems, who sold it to Mataris. And then last year, Mataris formed a new code, Gemini Rail, a wholly owned subsidiary that, according to Companies House, was previously known as Nor Brems Rail Services UK Limited. And I have to say that there is something fundamentally wrong with the way our economy works when a site can change hands so many times in such a short space of time with little or no say for the workers, the very people whose livelihoods depend on it. In 23 years, it has been in British ownership, in German ownership, in French ownership, and it's back again in German ownership, and it should be in public ownership instead. 
There is something fundamentally wrong as well when our economy allows for the power to decide the future of 200 jobs and extinguish thousands of years of collective working experience, the power to close down a critical part of our industrial base, which has been in place for over 150 years, when that power rests with a new company, which has just owned a business for a matter of weeks. It cannot be right when an owner who is just in the door has so much more power than the workforce, which is successfully delivering its budget, meeting its targets, and generating profits. I want to close by focusing on the future of the Cali, because there is nothing preordained about this. There is no invisible hand of the market locking the padlock on these factory gates. No iron law of history determining that somehow the Cali works should close. Indeed, I say to the Minister today, we make our own history. Why don't you seize this moral, social, economic imperative that demands action, that demands government intervention to save these jobs and this vital part of our productive base? Gemini Rail is bidding for work on the ScotRail Class 170 Turbo Star contract. It's a value of, eight, of, 80, of eight million pounds that represents 40% of the annual turnover of the Cali site. Yet if Gemini wins this work, it would be work carried out in Milton Keynes. So we would have a situation where we will be transporting railway carriages, no doubt by road, to a site some 400 miles away. The Cali site needs a bit of vision. It needs innovative government, a government with ambition, which is prepared to seriously consider bringing this site back into public ownership as part of a commitment to bringing the whole railway system back into public ownership. That is what these workers deserve. That is why I am happy to give my full support to their campaign to save these jobs and to save this site. Let's save the Cali. Annie Wells, followed by Colin Smith. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer and my thanks to, to James Kelly for bringing this debate to the Chamber today. I think that the strength of feeling regarding this issue can easily be shown by the fact that there are two separate members' business debates planned this week regarding the St Rollocks Railway Works, otherwise known as the, as the Cali, and as well as a large number of RMT and Unite members that are here in the gallery this evening, and I would just like to give my apologies. I was meant to pop along today, but I, I couldn't get out. But more than happy to meet um, later. Um, this is certainly a debate tinged with many emotions for myself, and more importantly, there is a great sadness, concern and regret that these historic works are under threat. Having grown up and still living in Springburn, the railway has always played an important part of my life, from my dad being a guard at the Cowlairs Depot, to known friends, family and, and neighbours who worked at the Cali. Indeed, the site continues to employ many people who live locally, for whom the railway is the only industry that they know and are extremely passionate about. With 120 full-time jobs at stake, with many other jobs linked to agencies, the situation is at a critical point. The site's historic links cannot be understated and deserve to be highlighted, particularly with regards to the current situation. At the height of the Industrial Revolution, the site at Springburn was used for the Caledonian Railway, which had moved away from Greenock, giving a major economic boost to the area and keeping it in pace with major industry changes that were occurring across the UK. And this is not a site that has failed to keep up pace with te te technological changes over the years, including this very day. And in recent years, the works have played a key role in overhauling many of ScotRail's Class 156 and Class 320 trains. When so many livelihoods are at stake, affecting so many families in an area I know so well, I believe that the government should be doing all it can to help secure a future for this vital site. We, we read reports of a meeting with the Transport Secretary, Unite and Site Owners, Gemini, that took place on January the 23rd. That is almost a month ago, and the Consul peaked consultation period ends in under two weeks and I would like to think that more discussions are planned between all interested stakeholders. 
and I was pleased to hear that the Scottish Government have urged Transport Scotland to accelerate a commission looking at the electrification of the depot. Electrification is certainly a viable option for the future of this site, given its geographical location. And I too support this idea, and I want to ask the Cabinet Secretary if he's able to provide an update on how those calls to Transport Scotland are progressing in relation to any potential electrification at the Cali. And I'd also like to back calls made to extend the consultation period to allow more time for the depot to be saved. The Cali is not a site that is beyond saving. In fact, it's the exact opposite. That is why it's such a shock when plans were announced to close this much-loved site and, that, and why there is such a fight to save, save it from closure. I fully believe that the St Rollock Railway Works have a viable part to play in the economy of Springburn and beyond. And the thought of this closure going ahead would be utterly devastating for the local community. I hope that the, debate in, the debates in Parliament and the passion shown by members across this chamber can redouble efforts to find a way forward ahead of the consultation period ending. This is the minimum the workforce and their families deserve. Thank you. Colin Smith, followed by Bob Doris. Thank you, President Officer. And can I refer members to my register of interest as a member of Unite the Union? Can I also thank James Kelly, not only for, for tabling his motion, which has allowed today's debate to take place today, but also for his campaign work in, in solidarity with workers at the Cali alongside Glasgow North East MP Paul Sweeney and the Trade Unions Unite and the RMT. As we've already heard from the RMT and Unite members on, on the streets outside Parliament earlier and from James Kelly and Richard Leonard and others in today's debate, the Labour movement is very clear. We cannot, we will not allow St Rollicks to close. It would be devastating for the hundreds of high-skilled workers at the Cali, their families, their communities, and it would be devastating for the long-term future of railway engineering in Scotland, where the skills lost may never be recovered. The Scottish Government, this Parliament, owes it to the workers at the site, the local communities, the Scottish railway engineering industry, to protect this national asset and take every possible measure to stop this closure, including if necessary, the Scottish Government intervening to take over the lease of the site from Hanstein. Labour unashamedly supports public control of our railways. Now, that's not a return to a 20th century model of nationalisation. It's a modern 21st century vision of democratic ownership that puts passengers, not profits, first. It's a vision that recognises that public transport is a public service. And if that vision means where we have market failure in key sites that serve our public transport system, also bringing them under public ownership, then so be it. President officer, that wouldn't be a last resort in my view. It would be an opportunity, an opportunity to develop a publicly owned Scottish railway engineering hub to meet the needs of the Scottish rail sector. St Rolex is the largest rolling stock repair site in Scotland. If we want Scotland's railways to be maintained, to be refurbished, to be repaired in Scotland, then we need to save that site. It's clear that despite the challenges it has faced, this is a financially viable site with work to keep it operational during 2019. It's a turnover of over £20 million a year, but it has been let down by the transfer of posts south of the border by the current owners and a lack of vigour to secure contracts, leaving the site to wither on the vine instead of reaching the potential we know it clearly has. That's why every option needs to be explored to secure the site's future and why the site also needs to support to grow, including electrifying the line to the depot. That would be a small investment, but one with huge benefits, giving the site access to a significant market that's been closed off until now, but is critical to future proofing the depot. With diesel multiple units now making up just 12% of pipeline rolling stock orders, electrification is a necessity for the future of this site. Beyond that, we need to see investment in diversifying the depot to protect existing skills, ensuring it's not overly dependent on one particular form of work and protecting the site against the cyclical nature of project work, which currently plagues the rolling stock engineering industry. I think we also need to look again at the impact of the way rolling stock is now procured, in particular the effect of design, build and maintenance contracts and the impact that has on the location of works and the skill base. The crisis at Springburn brings home to us all the huge issues currently facing the industry. The need for a new strategy to protect a skilled workforce who have given their livelihoods to the rail industry is needed now more than ever before. President officer, 
We now have less than two weeks to secure this site, to rally ruin the Cali and save the jobs at Springburn. The closure of this depot would be devastating for the workforce and for the local community. It would have a lasting impact on the Scottish rail engineering industry. But there are alternatives to closure. The government needs to vigorously pursue those alternatives, including taking the site back into public hands and show solidarity to the workers that have came here and given us that strong message today. Thank you. Bob Doris, followed by John Finney. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I welcome the opportunity to contribute to this debate and thank the workers from the Cali and my constituency for coming to the Parliament. I will lead a second debate tomorrow evening on the same theme, where I'll have more time to expand my comments and get into much more detail. The owners at St Rollocks, Jim and I, have, acted, have not acted in good faith. They put off engaging with Scottish Government agencies and they stunned employees in Springburn by announcing the company's intention to close the site before Christmas. I raised the matter at First Minister's questions and visited St Rollocks to meet workers. My ask of the First Minister was to establish a stakeholder group to save jobs and to save the future of the site. That group will meet for a third time on Thursday this week. Gemini's inaction and interaction with that group has lacked both imagination and it's lacked flexibility. I met Gemini in December and it emerged that our order book would run up until June 2019. That means that any statutory process for redundancies, which we obviously didn't want to see anyway, didn't have to even commence until April this year. I urge Gemini not to commence the redundancy process early, but instead use the time to consider alternative plans. Gemini ignored the request and needless notices were served to workers in January. That lacked goodwill and it lacked good faith. Once again, I plead to them, halt this process. It is not required. I am concerned about Gemini not proactively seeking work and lacking enthusiasm and commitment when it does seek orders for their order book. I inform Gemini that the owners of the St Rollock site would be interested in thinking imaginatively to reduce the cost base at that site and work collaboratively with Gemini or whoever occupied that site. It took me to contact the owners. The, the owners. It took me to push that matter forward. Gemini had not explored that option. That's a dereliction of duty. At the stakeholder meeting, myself and Unite raised the prospect of electrification of the line at St Rollox to further reduce business costs and potentially and significantly open the site up to a greater range of work. The Scottish Government are now actively exploring this. Efforts to find a solution and save jobs continue, but Gemini appear ambivalent at best. I hope Gemini take exception to my painting of them as being inflexible, unimaginative, unambitious and lacking in goodwill. Please take exception, but prove me wrong and step in to save these jobs. In 2018, St Rollox actually made a gross profit, but a marginal net loss when overheads were applied, a tiny loss based on a £20 million turnover. However, Gemini then decided to allocate central costs of £1.16 million, and we're not sure why. There is an urgent need for Gemini to disaggregate those costs to better understand those numbers. This will improve the prospect of attracting both public and private sector investment. I mentioned what Gemini could bid for. Gemini have asserted that even if they won this work, they may still seek to close the site. I find that astounding and short-sighted position. In fact, it's just unacceptable. There appears to be no effort by Gemini to explore how they could expand or contract operations at Springburn based on a changing order book. Can Gemini limit redundancies, maintain operations and expand in the future? Of course they could. Are they trying to do it? No, they're not. We have heard of up to 100 jobs at Wabtec and Kilmarnock for those who may be made redundant in Springburn. We don't want to see redundancies, but we hear of 100 jobs. This could, and I stress, presiding officer, could be welcome as part of a planned contraction at Springburn that retain, retains key skills at the site to expand further in the future. But that's not what's happening. So when Gem and I have not shown vision, we must show that vision. Unite have asked for the Scottish public sector to explore taking over the site as well as the 2P of jobs. Of course, this must be considered. I will say more tomorrow about how Unite believe there could be a viable order book for St Rollocks from around December 2019. 
I will also explore the prospect of securing a railway hub at Springburn for generations to come. On those two suggestions, let me make one key point. The Scottish public sector must have strategic control over the St Rollock site. That requires a long-term agreement, at the very least, between the public sector and the owners of that site. Not Gemini, the owners of that site. If the site is to be invested in as part of a strategic infrastructure of Scotland's railways, we must have strategic control over it. I would urge the Cabinet Secretary to reply to that point in his summing up. So, therefore, Presiding Officer, I look forward to exploring some of these issues in more detail tomorrow, including the potential of a workers' buyout. In the meantime, I appeal for Gemini to come to the table in a meaningful way to discuss various ideas and for their parent company, Matares, to be more hands-on in doing the right thing by a workforce who have been involved in the railways at that site since 1856. But for the moment, presiding officer, I remain absolutely committed to Please rallying close. Ruby Cali and will return to these issues during tomorrow's debate. John Finney, followed by Elaine Smith. Uh, thank you, President Officer. It's customary to congratulate the member on securing the debate. I don't suppose uh, Mr Kelly would want me to congratulate him for that, but I do congratulate the combined um, uh, work that's gone on with, uh, with Mr Kelly, uh, Mr Doris and indeed Mr Sweeney. But most of all, the RMT and Unite, because come this stage of the debate, much of it's all been said. But what I, I would want to touch on is something that Richard Leonard said. And that is when he, he talked about uh, the, the succession of private companies involved at the site following privatisation since 1995. Well, the obligation placed in each and every one of these companies is to maximise profit for their shareholders, to have minimal regard a lot of them will have had for, um, for the workforce. And I think the term used by Mr Neil, um, contempt, Alec Neil, is entirely ap appropriate. So there's no contempt from the Scottish Green Party. We lend our support and equivocal support to any group of workers in this situation. I want to talk about the broader situation with rail and how fragmented the rail, uh, rail industry is across the UK. We've got the tracking infrastructure, the franchises, the freight train operators, the rolling stock, primarily owned by the rolling stock leasing companies. And uh, we, of course, we know that rail still enjoys significant public sub subsidies, but there's a lot of folks still to get their cut there. And what's important, what's important is the role of these premises to not only the immediate communities, but as others have touched on, that it's a national asset. <clears throat> now, like others before, um, it's certainly the view of the Scottish Green Party that rail, including the infrastructure and support services, importantly engineering being part of that, should be in public ownership, run exclusively in the public interest. And we'd start by uh, removing the franchise for Abel from Abellio. Would that sort of everything? No, it certainly wouldn't, but it would give us strategic direction. Um, and in recent years, we know that staff at the works are focused on rolling stock and component refurbishment. So I'm grateful to the letter from Mr Cash, the General Secretary of the RMT, when he, he talks about the, the, the format of contracts at the moment. They are design, build and maintain, and commends the approach of an integrated rolling strategy. And I think that's something, uh, rolling stock strategy, that's something that needs to be seriously looked at. Uh, because... It, it's this fragmentation, it's the lack of a single direction, a single direction that is importantly operating exclusively in the public interest that brings about many of these problems, in, in, in my opinion. This is the largest rolling stock uh, repair site in Scotland. There are two other smaller ones, and I'll not repeat all the figures that are there and clear for everyone to see. What I would say is that there are opportunities, there are very clear opportunities and we know there's new rolling stock coming on with less demand for repairs and maintenance. But inspecting, repairing and replacing is a, an integral part of any system. And um, as has been touched on, 88% are going to be electric. So I welcome the expansion of uh, electrification um, and I appreciate all that will be said about control periods. But it seems to me that if there's to be a collaborative approach adopted in relation to this, we need to ensure the electrification of all depots. And, um, and it even seems ridiculous to say that. Yeah, that should have been a de fact. The costs, well, you know, we announced a billion pound road today. The costs are um, insignificant in terms of the benefits that can be accrued. So um, I'm aware that the white collar uh, operations have moved to Milton Keynes. Uh, I'm very supportive of looking at other uh, innovative approaches, not least the, uh, in respect of our... Uh, a transport hub. Um, now, of course, the nature of, of rail is that we want to have and will continue regardless, and we support the devolution of network rail, and we want a publicly run rail network, but of course there's going to be cooperation uh, across these small islands. But Scotland will be, and this is a quote from the, the Westminster debate, at a huge strategic disadvantage in maintaining its own rolling stock, uh, depending on the railway maintenance facilities elsewhere. 
Prestwick's been alluded to. Can I give two examples from my own area where public sector involvement is for, uh, in transport is seen for the wider public benefit? And that's not simply CalMAC, but Highlands and Islands Airport Limited there. So there are comparators. I'm not impressed with the idea of entrepreneurial. I just want the Scottish Government to do what's in the interest of the Scottish people, and that is to maintain this site. Thank you. The last of the open debate contributions is from Elaine Smith. Thank you, President Officer. Can I say to the Chamber, I'm a member of Unite and Convener of the RMT's parliamentary group, and I also welcome members of the union, uh, the unions, both unions here tonight, and Paul Sweeney MP as well. And like others, I want to thank James Kelly for bringing the debate this evening and make a short contribution in support of that. Can I also thank Bob Doris for his motion, which will be debated tomorrow evening. As others have said, the Cali site in Springburn is the single biggest step of its kind in Scotland and it's essential to servicing and supporting Scottish railways. And the importance and expertise of the services of the Cali was recognised when the site was sold on to Mataris only last year, because at that time the Chief Executive Officer said rail services hold a unique market position in the UK, providing excellent expert services and know-how for the railway industry. Both companies have strong growth potential and they're an ideal match for our ongoing operations. So it's therefore shocking that only some six months later, the staff are now on statutory notice. The site, of course, had already suffered a reduction in staffing le uh, levels over the years, and it was disappointingly not given assistance from the government in 2013, when former owner Rail Care was placed in administration. And now we know that nearly 200 highly experienced staff are facing an uncertain future, but unfortunately, the government does not appear to have seen urgency in the situation, and I'll explain the reason why I say that. Because in October, I lodged questions regarding the future of the Springburn site when it was highlighted that the lease was up for renewal. I was advised four weeks later, and I quote, officials from Transport Scotland have made contact with Gemini Rail Services UK Limited, the division of Mataris who have taken over North Brems Rail Services and will be meeting representatives soon to discuss the future of the Springburn site, its staff and its workload. Well, considering that the Transport Minister had already been made aware of the situation directly by the staff and their trade unions, it is surprising that no meetings had taken place earlier, I have to say. This busy site has got an unrivalled excellent work record and it's got the largest capacity in Scotland to service orders and it's invested in key specialist equipment. And given the amount of public money the government is happy to invest in the Bellio Scott Rail, it is concerning that the potential loss of this major support site was not higher on the agenda. And I do hope that it is now with two debates taking place this week, and I'm sure we'll hear from the Minister and his summing up about that. President Officer, we're all too aware of the constant disruption to passengers as trains seem to break down on a weekly basis and toilet services are more often than not out of use. And I can only imagine the difficulties that will be caused if the future repair and maintenance is to take place over 300 miles away and can't be completed at the Cali. And I support uh, James Kelly's call for government intervention to own it publicly. I'll just finish by quoting the General Secretary of the RMT, Mick Cash, who said, the planned closure of the Springburn Rail Depot in Glasgow is an act of industrial vandalism. Well, every effort must be made to ensure that our Scottish railways are fully supported with the expertise and knowledge that's readily available at the Cali. And this parliament and government must make a stand against this unjustified, costly and short-sighted act of industrial vandalism. I believe that public ownership is the way forward. And once again, I thank James Kelly for bringing the important debate this evening. I call on Michael Matheson to respond to the debate for around seven minutes, please, Cabinet Secretary. Thank you very much, uh, Deputy President Officer. And can I, like others, uh, begin by congratulating James Kelly in securing time for uh, this debate? I'm conscious this is one of two debates uh, which we'll have this week on uh, the Cali and the future of that particular uh, facility. Also, uh, I'm very conscious of uh, the need to put on record my thanks to uh, the local member, Bob Doris, who has uh, been very diligent in pursuing this matter on behalf of his constituents and the uh, uh, the company which is based and the site which is based within his constituency. Um, he's pursued this matter uh, with vigour and I uh, fully respect his uh, commitment to trying to achieve the best outcome for his constituents and for this particular site uh, in its future uh, use. One of the things that, Senator Officer, I want to do tonight, though, is um, uh, given that we have two debates this matter, I want to emphasise the importance that we place on 
uh, the rail industry in Scotland. Uh, because we're in a situation just now where, as a government, our investment in rail is at unprecedented levels. We're making sure that we're making the right type of investment into our rail services. So, for example, over the last four years, uh, as part of our support to the ScotRail franchise, there's been some £475 million pounds has been invested in new and refurbished uh, rolling stock. Uh, part of that work from the refurbishment works that's been taken forward has resulted in Springburn, at the, you call it, the, the site in Springburn, where some £36 million pounds of that investment has been invested for the purposes of that refurbishment at work. And alongside the wider work we're doing within the industry, whether it be the Caledonian sleeper uh, or the new, uh, new Hidatchi trains which are being introduced. Um, a lot of this work uh, that we've been undertaking uh, in terms of refurbishing uh, rolling stock has been taking place in Springburn, but also the Wabtec at Rail Scotland base uh, in Kilmarnock, also Brodie's engineering facilities in Kilmarnock, uh, Alstrom and Pomodie, their maintenance depot uh, there, and as I mentioned, also at Springburn. So there's a range of depots which have been used for some of this refurbishment work that's been getting undertaken in Scotland. That sits alongside the investment which has been made by, for example, Hitachi in uh, the Craig and Tinney site uh, for maintenance of those particular uh, rolling stock, uh, that particular rolling stock as well. And there's no doubt from the investments we've made, uh, passengers and the public get benefit from that and also it helps to sustain and support employment as well. And of course, we want to see that continuing as we move forward. This though, uh, Deputy Presiding Officer, is a sector which I think has historically uh, been under-recognised for the contribution which it makes to our economy. It's also a sector which I don't think has been properly recognised as been able to uh, sustain uh, investment over an extended period of time where too often uh, companies find themselves in a situation where they have work or they don't have work depending on how the leasing arrangements and the rolling stock operators choose to roll these things at uh, their investment programmes uh, forward. This is a sector that uh, has a, a significant number of people employed in Scotland. It's now estimated there's something in the region of 1,200 workers directly involved in the maintenance and in the preparation of our fleet on a daily basis. That's a significant workforce um, across the country. And these are uh, jobs which are skilled uh, and ones which will continue to require in the future if we are to make sure that we continue to sustain and improve our public transport uh, network. Uh, I also want to just share with the, uh, with the, uh, with the Chamber uh, my view and why I think this sector has been under-recognised over a, a long extended period of time. It's estimated that the supply chain to the industry in Scotland alone, the gross value of that is in the region of £668 million a year, sustaining some 13,000 people in employment. So this is a, a sector, as I mentioned, which is important and one we want to grow, which is why we've also been seeking to try and attract and been successful in attracting Talgo of Spain to use the Linganet site for the investment of uh, de developing a new site uh, for train manufacturing in Scotland, which could uh, create up to 1,000 jobs. So having said that, that's why it is disappointing that Gem and I have taken the approach which they have taken with the workshops at Springburn. And despite uh, repeated requests directly to them, uh, they have refused uh, to uh, postpone or to delay their consultation exercise, which has been undertaken at the present moment. And why it is important they continue to work with us in order to try and get additional time in order to look at this matter in greater detail. And I, President Officer, tonight uh, call upon Gemini again uh, to delay any decisions relating to this particular site in order to allow us to undertake further work on this matter. I'll give way to the member, yes. James Kelly. Thank the Cabinet Secretary for taking the intervention and I appreciate the overview of the rail industry and uh, that he's, he's given. But in terms of this consultation that is running currently, uh, can you maybe set out what specifically the government are going to do that's going to stop Gemini handing out re redundancy notices post-March the 4th? Because that's what I think the workers in the gallery want to hear. Uh, excuse me, chaps. Thank you. Michael Matheson. Can I say, President Officer, I'm coming to that particular, uh, particular point. 
uh, because there are some issues in terms of uh, uh, engagement and uh, the level of engagement uh, which are not accurate uh, from some of the members opposite uh, here uh, tonight. What I can assure members of is that from the very outset, uh, when there was an indication that there were concerns about this particular site, is that Transport Scotland officials did engage uh, with the company and also with Scottish Enterprise uh, to look at, at these issues. And since we got to the point where there have been concerns about their decision and the future use of that particular site, uh, both Transport Scotland and Scottish Enterprise officials have been engaged in that process, as have I been engaged in that process. Uh, one of the aspects that have come from that, I need to try and make progress, and there is a debate tomorrow. There is a debate tomorrow night for the member to uh, raise the matter again if she chooses to. One of the things that uh, uh, we've been doing is working with the sector in order to look to see whether we can change Gemini's mind or whether we can look at repurposing this site in a way which gives it a sustainable future to be used. And that's where the hub idea uh, for the industry comes in, to look at how we could utilise that potential site uh, for the provision of heavy rail and heavy engineering work going forward. And the work that we've been doing through uh, Scottish Enterprise and also through Transport Scotland is to give focus to that. So that's about making sure that we can utilise this site sustainably in the future to help to support the rail industry in Scotland in heavy engineering matters. Now, in order to do that, there's a number of actions that we have to take forward. One of the actions which was suggested is the issue of electrification of the line. Uh, the member's misguided in suggesting that uh, he would like me to look at doing something about that because we're already doing something about that. The work has already been commissioned to evaluate the electrification of that particular line into the site if that can help to support making sure that the site continues to be used for heavy rail purposes uh, going forward. And Network Rail have already been directly commissioned to undertake that work. And that decision uh, was made last month in order to try and progress that particular issue. However, having said that, as Annie Wales raised that issue as well, that's not something that can happen at the drop of a hat. There's a detailed piece of work that has to be undertaken to electrify what potentially could be about four miles of line uh, into the depot in order to make it uh, suitable for any other company uh, coming in. And it will take time to do that. And that's why we need to work with Gemini and others within the industry in order to try and get them to get more time uh, in order to preserve this site uh, for going forward. And that's why repurposing the site is absolutely critical. So let me just go through a number of the things which uh, we're undertaking. So for example, uh, Scottish Enterprise have been engaging with the whole of the rail sector in Scotland to look at how they might utilise this potential site if we moved it to a hub model going forward. That includes engaging with the site owners because Gemini don't own this site. Hansteen's own this site and they lease it. The present arrangement for the leasing arrangements do not appear attractive to other operators coming in. So Hansteen's are now in working with uh, Scottish Enterprise are looking at how they could change the leasing arrangements and the existing site arrangements to make it more attractive for others within the industry to look at utilising that site. And that work has now been undertaken and we expect to get that report from Hansteen's in the next couple of weeks, setting out how that potentially could be done to support and encourage other uh, companies to come into this particular site. Alongside that, Scottish Enterprise are working with all of those within the rail sector industry in Scotland to look at how they could come together to look at utilising the site if it was to move to a hub model. And that's now been taken forward on a formal basis with a partnership right across the industry. And that work is going to continue to be undertaken in order to try and make sure that we achieve a sustainable future for this particular site. So officer, I'm very conscious of time and a number of points have been raised and I'll try to address them, if not tonight, certainly in tomorrow night's debate, given that we have a second opportunity uh, to look at this matter. But what I can assure all members and I can assure those workers in the galleries here tonight, as a government, we are doing everything we can within our powers to make sure that this site continues to be utilised for heavy rail purposes in the future. And we will continue to work with all of those in the industry in order to realise that as we move forward in the weeks and months ahead. That concludes the debate and this meeting is closed.